We're underneath the hood of our 1970 Plymouth Cuda. This guy is the real deal. This is a numbers matching engine and transmission in this vehicle. Uh, I had the opportunity to be underneath the vehicle for a short period of time and um, did check the numbers and they absolutely positively are the correct numbers for the engine and the transmission in this vehicle. It's the original 383 ENCODE car that this uh, uh, vehicle was born with. Uh, most of the paint on this thing is... I, I can't tell you that the engine's been out. I'm sure it's been out and refreshed, but it really, really appears to be an original engine. Still has the original cast iron exhaust manifolds on it. It has the uh, shrouding that goes over the manifolds that they used for 70 and 71 where they ducted some hot air into the uh, uh, intake system. That worked real well. Um, all the PCV connectors are still intact on the vehicle. It has the original Presto Light distributor with the tan cap. It has a set of aftermarket Mopar style uh, hemi orange uh, high silicone wires that go with it. The uh, heater for the uh, passenger compartment is still hooked up to the vehicle. It does have power brakes. It does not have power steering. It has a high flow radiator in it, a new battery. Fender tag is still present on the vehicle. Still has the original numbers on the radiator core support and on the cowl area, which all e-body cars have. All of them don't have the number here. They definitely all have them there. Original wiper uh, solution bottle. I can't see a single thing on this thing that uh, is not as it was in 1970 uh, when it left the factory. Has the original air cleaner on it, cast iron intake manifold, uh, Carter uh, AVS uh, carburetor on it. Would be a six and a quarter. Uh, this would be a, a 750 on this. Uh, nice, absolutely nice engine compartment. No uh, oil leaks evident from the uh, valve pan covers. Well, the intake can't leak. Um, there's no oil to it. <clears throat> or the timing chain cover area. None whatsoever. Really, really looks good. Um, great looking engine compartment. These engines made uh, an advertised 335 horsepower. Way underrated. They were, they were right knocking at the 400 door. Uh, very strong running cars. Nice short uh, stroke motor for a B block and it's just a great running car and a fantastic engine compartment. A lot of originality. It doesn't appear to have been painted on the inner fender wells anywhere. Great looking engine compartment. I can't find a single thing that I could tell you that uh, is not as it was in 1970 when it left the factory. Hi, you're Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And our guest on the floor at this point is a 1970 Cuda. Not a Barracuda, this thing is a real Cuda, a BS car, and an ENCODE car, which makes it a 383 four-barrel car, 335 horse. Let's go over this thing and see what we can find for you, but this thing, just from walking around at once, I don't think we're going to find much. Paint on this thing is absolutely show quality. It, I'm, I don't use that term very often, but I, I very seldom see a paint job that equals this. We have nice ones. We just did one on a 71 uh, uh, Challenger car, and the paint was absolutely gorgeous on it. This is a step above everything else. This is, this is as nice as it gets. Eighth of an inch, the whole way around this guy. You can see the fitment of the hood to the front fender. Original equipment, Mopar uh, clips and hardware for the uh, hood pins. Again, eighth inch the whole way around this thing. The paint on this thing is just exemplary. I can't even over describe how nice the paint is on this car. No one's messed with the filler panels uh, in the scoop area. A lot of guys take those out, cut them out, and allow air to go in, which you can do. This is originality, and that's what this car uh, exemplifies, is the originality of a 1970 383 ENCODE CUDA. Are you finished around the uh, headlights? It's all plastic, of course. The grill area, there's no pieces missing, no chips, no marks. Plymouth designation. Again, original Argent style paint on it. Trim around the entire grill area. 
I can't find a single mark anywhere. Bumper fitment, spot on. Uh, both for linearity and, and elevation, it's as nice as you'll ever find. Of course, fog lamps that uh, everyone wants on a CUDA. Nice clear lenses on them. The front valance, again, you know your Argent area uh, trim piece that goes in there. Nice as can be. No pull marks on the uh, front of the uh, valance. Red streaks through the uh, blacked out grill area. Really add a lot of detail to this vehicle. The front end of this car is absolutely as nice as you will ever find. Chrome on the bumper. I can't see a single mark, a single little scuff or anything on it. It's just as nice as you'll ever find. Again, the fitment, the originality, the color, uh, everything on the front end of this car is just spot on. Let's see what we can find on the uh, driver's side. Okay, driver's side of our Hemi Orange Cuda. Side marker lamp, flush as can possibly be. Nice clear lens. Wheel lip molding. No marks whatsoever. Absolutely none. Again, look at this. This is just like that Challenger we just did. Just as nice a fitment as you would ever, ever hope to find. Trim around the front windshield, no marks, no scuffs. Um, I'm going to say it's not a tinted windshield, but it's very difficult to tell on this light. It may be, but I just can't quite see a, a band of tint across the top. But no marks on the, on the glass at any uh, point anyway. So again, original arms, aftermarket blades on it. The fitment of this thing is amazing. There, this cannot be any more precise than it is here. This is absolutely as good as it gets. It almost equals what you'd find on a Porsche or a Ferrari. That's how nice the fitment is on that guy right there. The roof on this is just like a sheet of glass. Uh, no imperfections, no dings, no marks. Uh, no blotching in the paint whatsoever. It's hard to tell, but these cars, they appear to be a solid orange color. They're not. When you get them out in the sunlight, they do have some metallic in them. It's like a gold metallic in it. really, really shines out. Fantastic uh, color of paint that Mopar chose to put on these cars. Standard, conventional uh, mirror that's on the side of it. Windows wipes are, I think they're original, but they are as nice as you would ever, ever find. There's no reason to even consider uh, replacing them. Rubbers around the windows. No marks or anything, just as nice as can be. I think they're original too. They definitely do not need replaced. Uh, drip rail, stainless. No marks at all. Chrome on the door handle. As flawless as can be. Wow, look at this. As good as some of these cars are, this one's better. I mean, this is one of those where I can't tell you we need to tweak this or tweak that. That door is well, not even... The only thing we're going to do is open and close it. That's it. The uh, hockey stick. Stripe 383 designation on the quarter panel. Correct uh, uh, argent colored uh, rocker panel molding. Again, trim around the wheel well, absolutely flawless. No money in that guy. That's all original tin. Again, the side marker lamp, just as flush fitment as could possibly be. 15 inch rally wheels with BFG uh, tires on them. White letter. Uh, nice addition. It is the uh, correct style rally wheel that uh, would have come on this car with the correct Argent type centers. Fantastic wheel. This is the most popular wheel on a Mopar at this point are the rally wheels. You got them? Uh, let's go around the back, see what we can find for you there. Okay, we're around the back end of our 1970. Cuda, Enco car, 383, a real 383 car. Um, neglected to mention when I was over there, but the hat rack in this thing, the shelf, rear shelf is as nice and new as could possibly be. No marks on the rear glass, and the trim around it is absolutely as positively nice as it could ever fit. You can't even put a fingernail uh, between the uh, body and the uh, uh, polished stainless trim on this car. 
eighth of an inch the whole way around this rear deck as you can see it's just as nice as can be and the paint on it is the same as it was on that boat on front or down the side of this car the paint on this car is just you'd have to see it to really appreciate it it's absolutely fantastic and again the fitment look it does not get much better than that trim around the back end this is correct uh, semi-flat black the way it's supposed to be to the designation all the trim around this even the uh, tail light trim the lenses themselves are crystal clear the uh, chrome trim around them uh, no pitting or marks that I can detect anywhere uh, chrome on the back bumper appears to be original back bumper too um, well within production standards this is out just a hair from what this side is. This side either has to be shimmed out just a hair, which is what I think needs to be done, um, to make it absolutely a precision fit for this thing. Bumperettes, nice as can be, and they still have the original uh, rubber boots that go between the bumperette and the uh, rear valance area where it's cut out. Of course, the standard CUDA high performance exhaust system that transitions through the rear valance on this vehicle and it has no pulls or any marks or anything on it the uh, tips are really lined up just as nice and sweet as they could possibly be and the back end of this car is just as nice as the side and the front there's absolutely absolutely nothing other than that little tweak on the bumper that I can find so far in this car that's it let's see what's on the passenger side okay up the passenger side of our 383 uh, CUDA Side marker lamp, just as sweet as you'd ever find. Absolutely as nice as you'd find. Tin. No bondo whatsoever anywhere. Again, the trim around this back window is just... I, I don't even know how they put it on with such precision. I really don't. But it's on there and it is absolutely flawless. Quarter panel paint the same way as it was on the rest of the car everywhere. Again, look at this door. This is totally amazing. Totally amazing. Chrome is perfectly like new on the uh, door handles themselves. Drift rail, nada. There's not a single imperfection in it anywhere. Rubbers with the window seals, same way. Again, I think they are original. There's no reason to replace them. Wipes, whiskers, the same way. There's no reason for replacement. They're original and just fit absolutely as they should. Again, look at this fitment. Look, this is amazing. Both our antenna, fender lip here, same way as it was in the rest of the car. Side marker lamp. I can't find a single stone chip, a single mark, a single deviation, a panel that doesn't fit other than that bumper needs tweaked either. That one goes in or this one comes out, one of the two. And that makes it spot on. Front one already is that way. It's really, really nice to, uh, fitment on that one. Got 15 inch rally wheels, Argent centers, BFG tires, Hemi orange with a black interior, black accents. It doesn't get much better than this. This thing is a numbers correct, end code, real CUDA 383 car. It, and it, it just doesn't get any better than that. Got a black interior in it. Uh, no one's messed with the motor. It's got the original cam. Uh, it doesn't appear to uh, have ever been modified, you know, with headers on it or anything else. Standard cast iron manifolds. The car is just the finest representation that you could possibly find of a 70 383 CUDA. Very collectible car. These cars are very difficult to find that haven't been modified and played with and uh, completely redone. This car is not that car. This car is a car that had a uh, just an exemplary paint job laid on the original tin that this car was born with. The drive line is original. We're going to go over the interior for you next, which you know, just from sitting in it, I know that the car is just flawless inside as it is on the outside. This car is available at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. We haven't priced it yet. 
Uh, we've had a few of these cars. Uh, they don't seem like they last very long when someone finds out what they are. Uh, it's, it's just a numbers matching car, a difficult car to find, especially in that color combination. So take a look at it. Hangsters, Daytona Beach, Florida. Well, we're inside of our 1970 Plymouth 383 Encode Cuda. Uh, black interior, hemi orange car on the outside. Fantastic looking car. Uh, original dashboard in the car. Uh, still resilient, uh, no cracks or marks whatsoever. Yeah, I, I found one. In fact, I found two. Make that three. There's a hairline crack here, here, and here. Again, the original dashboard, so, you know, I, I, we're not going to replace it. It's originality. I don't even know. I can't even put a fingernail in it, so that's how small they are. Hardly noticeable. There, there. Could not see them from outside. Uh, still resilience on the, uh, the three spokes for the steering wheel. Wood grain finish on it is just as though it was new yet. Very, very nice. Original equipment, uh, standard gauge package on it, speedometer, uh, fuel temp, an amp, does not have a clock. Original equipment, uh, AM radio in the car. Headliner is just as nice and tight as you could possibly hope for. Uh, no deterioration around the mirror. The night day designation is still clear as can be. Carpeting in the car is just as nice and clean as could possibly be. I'm going to say it's original carpeting. Um, doesn't really have any deterioration to it. It, it really looks good. It really looks nice. The uh, seats appear to have been redone. Nice fresh padding in them everywhere. Backs and uh, seating area. Uh, the uh, back part of the uh, car, the, the, the side panels in the back, there's no deterioration, no flaking or cracking or anything on them. They're just absolutely as new. Door handles the same, or window cranks the same way. Uh, all nice, bright and shiny. The handles are nice, look like absolutely brand new. Uh, again, the back seat area is just as fresh and nice as it is in the front. No marks, no uh, uh, scuffs or anything on the interior anywhere, absolutely nowhere. It is a column shift car, it does not have a console, it has pockets, uh, no console, which designates that it would have a uh, shift on the column. Original sun visors on the car. Check this out, it still has the original shoulder belts for the front seating area. Still has the original ones. Amazing. It's as nice as can possibly be in here. Um, door panels, uh, again, absolutely like new. Cuda designation on them. The uh, openers, the uh, chrome on them is flawless. Uh, the uh, armrest pads, which are usually deteriorated, are just like new on this particular vehicle. Lock mechanisms function as they should. Nice clear white where it says vents to open the uh, vents for the uh, uh, Ventilation for the car, dome light that works. This car is as nice inside as it was on the outside, really, other than, you know, going, you know, just recapping this. The only thing I can remember seeing is a little bumper adjustment in the back. We're not touching the doors. A few very, very, very fine uh, cracks on the original dashboard pad on this car, which I would not replace. Uh, carpeting, nice and fresh as can be. No wear whatsoever in the interior of this car. I mean, it's just as nice as you'll ever find. You have to really take a look at this car if you're looking for a collectible, numbers correct, 70 Cuda. 70 and 71s are the years that you everybody is looking for. This guy is correct in every way. So take a look at it. Well, we're underneath our 1970 Plymouth Cuda. Real Cuda. Um, Encode car, 383. Numbers correct. Transmission correct in this car. Everything is correct. It's one of the nicest cars we have in the building. It's a car you really should take a look at. But we're going to do the undercarriage uh, presentation for you now on it, so you know what you got underneath this car. Uh, original K member in the front. A little tiny bit of a depression there <coughs> from jacks through the years. Uh, sway bar. The bushings are nice and fresh yet. They're nice. Uh, brand new steering box on the uh, on the vehicle. New rotors and. Original calipers, they still look nice and fresh. They're not really uh, deteriorated. The original equipment style uh, hardware uh, for the brakes in the front. Uh, original equipment starter, it's not a gear reduction. 
it is the original motor I did state. There's no marks on the um, uh, skirts that come down from the uh, fender wells and transition onto the uh, subframes on this vehicle. Again, take a look. No leaks on the uh, engine itself or the bell housing area or the transmission at all. There's absolutely none. Original cooling lines still uh, go forward to the uh, radiator for the uh, tranny cooling. Subframes on the car are just as sweet as could possibly be. Really, absolutely no dingy marks, uh, jack marks or anything on them. Eh, I'm not even going to call it. It's, it would be ridiculous to even point it out. It's not even enough of a dent to point it out. It might have been done when it was cat stamped in the uh, factory. <clears throat> Cast iron exhaust manifolds, original equipment on his car. Still not changed. Uh, no one's done anything with a uh, set of headers or cams or uh, different intakes or anything on this car. It is an original car. I'm going to call them two and a quarter inch pipes transitioning off the uh, cast iron headers and heading back to two brand new turbo mufflers in the rear. The uh, floor pans in the uh, front are the original pans. Uh, they have not been replaced and they are just as like new like the day they left the factory. Very, very nice condition on this vehicle. The um, transition area in the back where the, uh, the transmission mount goes, the uh, uh, structural member that goes over and ties onto the two subframes. There's no marks on it, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. A new U-joint in the uh, front of the drive shaft. No leaks out of the tail shaft, no leaks out of the speedometer gear housing. Uh, the uh, fuel lines, original equipment on the uh, passenger side, original brake lines on the uh, uh, driver side do not need replaced. They're original, but they are as new condition. They're really great condition. The um, parking brake assembly is still attached and functional on this particular vehicle. The rear floor pans are just like the front ones. Uh, even all your structural uh, bracing and everything underneath them is still just as nice as can possibly be. Uh, there's no uh, deterioration on them. Uh, you can see where the pinch wells are, where they transition onto the uh, um, rocker panels themselves. Absolutely stunning car underneath here. It's a nice original representation of a 1970 uh, Plymouth Cuda. One of the most desirable cars on the market today, 70 and 71. Uh, really iconic cars in the muscle car world. But uh, we're halfway through it and I, there's nothing. And again, you can see no leakage whatsoever. A new exhaust system on the car. Um, newer shocks in the front. Um, new steering box. Everything on this car is as it was in 1970 when it was replaced. But let's do the back half and see what we can uh, determine for you there. Okay, second half of our 70 CUDA. Again, like we stated, there's your two uh, turbo mufflers in the back. Uh, really nice sound. They got a nice mellow sound to them, not objectionably loud. Just a nice mellow, real healthy sound to them. You know you're coming whenever you hear these things. Um, subframes in the back, one little tiny mark there, hardly anything worth mentioning. Same. I'm not even going to say there's one there, but again, it, it, they're so superficial they may have been done at the factory when these things were stamped even. It, it, that's how minute they are. A nice curvature to the rear springs. Torque boxes in the front are really, really nice on this car. Uh, really nice and solid. No one's uh, made any uh, attempts to hold them up with jack stands or lift them up by that. Eight and three quarter inch heavy duty rear end in it. Someone has put a, a rear sway bar on this vehicle. Um, I've seen a few of these on a lot of the e-body cars. I don't remember them coming from the factory, but possibly they did. Uh, these, I'm going to guess, are aftermarket, but I, I really don't know. But it is a rear functional sway bar on this vehicle. Again, 8 and 3 quarter inch heavy duty rear end. The uh, pipes out the back, these are 2 and, I'm going to say they're 2 and a quarter also. Uh, going out of the back of the turbo mufflers and going on to the correct uh, stainless exhaust tips that these cars were released with. Fin drum brakes in the back, a set of really healthy looking uh, shocks in the rear of this car. I don't think they're air shocks. I'm going to say they're not, but they are about the healthiest looking shocks I've seen for a while. Pretty heavy duty. Um, trunk area, there's absolutely no deterioration. The, uh, uh, the uh, rear subframes where they go transition up over the uh, rear axle and toward the back still retain the original tie-down bracketry on each side 
that they used from the factory to tie these guys down when they shipped them. Original gas tank, it is not a replacement. It is original and does not need replaced. It's as new as you ever find one. The uh, four pans in the back in the trunk area itself, original and absolutely as new. The fenders, the rear quarter panels, uh, drop downs, and still have the tabs on the inside of them. The, the uh, trunk area where it transitions on to them is just as fresh and clean and nice as could possibly be. All original tin that I can see, I don't see anything replaced anywhere on the undercarriage of this vehicle. And again, take a note that there are no oil leaks. Uh, at this point in time anyway, these are collector cars and you know we can't guarantee them for life and, and they do uh, they do uh, begin to have a drip here or there after a period of time just because of the way they're assembled and the materials that were used at that point in time for assembly. Most of them were cork gaskets. The uh, undercarriage is just as nice as it was in 1970. Again, no leaks on it. Uh, pan in the back where the uh, exhausts go through. Uh, there's no pull marks or anything on it. This car is as clean and nice a vehicle underneath as you could possibly ever find. You'll see uh, Devin has a bunch of um, high resolution uh, still photos for you to take a look at and he'll do a walk around and give you some uh, uh, video uh, presentation also underneath but that gives you enough ammunition once we do a drive of this car that you have everything that we've seen together on this car uh, for you to make a determination if you're interested or not. But it is here at Hangsters, Daytona Beach, Florida and it's a beautiful car, great color.